Good morning, everybody. Hello. My name is Lawrence Gold. I'm the host for this session. This is a section on the pendicular response, which I'd like to call the most fun you can have without laughing. <laughs> this presentation is likely to be of greatest interest to people who are working in the area of pain management or have patients who have chronic pain and are frustrated by doing too much work for too little results. Also, movement educators, that includes dance teachers, yoga instructors, physical education, athletic coaches who are looking to get that extra edge of performance or rapid learning versus slow sensory motor learning, movement learning. Also, coaches who have athletes who have been injured and have never completely recovered from the injury are prone to re-injury and are basically muscle-bound in the area of the previous injury. Also, people who work with the elderly to improve balance. This uh, action, this particular action, supports all sensory motor learning. I will tell you that I've had to extensively shrink this presentation so that it's movement oriented, whereas there is a cognitive side to pandiculation, which does in the mind what this kind of pandiculation, which I will be showing you shortly in video, accomplishes for movement. What it does is it frees a person from being muscle bound, frees them from the chronic pain of the contracted muscles, which create pain in themselves, pain in joints that they cause to be overcompressed, and pain in nerves that get trapped. This does it with no stretching, no strengthening, no manipulation. And it works faster, vastly faster than strengthening, stretching, or manipulation. It's the easy way. To give you a few words about my background, I've been doing this work for about 27 years. I'm a practitioner of a discipline that uses the pandicular response extensively. It's called HANA, somatic education. I've been practicing for 27 years, in which two years were on staff at a rehabilitation center of a community hospital in California. Since 1996, I've had a standing, no time limit refund satisfaction guarantee on all services and all of the published programs that I've created that enable people to clear up their own pain without need to see someone like me. It has rarely been invoked. The structure of this presentation, I'll tell you some things about the pendicular response, show you pendiculation in action, I'm going to demonstrate then I'm going to teach you how to do it. You have the opportunity to, to experience it in yourself, both from the client's position and from the practitioner position. We'll do a simple pendiculation for shoulders, tight shoulders. You'll see how quickly change can occur. This will perhaps be an eye opener for people whose area of investigation is neuroplasticity. I have this suspicion that neuroplasticity is something that's considered to be gradually effective, like water wearing on stone. Not necessarily so. Pendiculation is vastly faster. In the video that I prepared called Before and After, you'll see changes in one session. Large, visible, obvious changes, plus there'll be a track of the words of the client as we were going through a one week intensive. And then at the end there'll be a video of the client with whom I did one session for back and hip pain where it all disappeared. And these are typical results. This is typical. I like to think of this work as instant gratification. It is not the ordeal that people go through when having to stretch or going through physiotherapy. It is comfortable to go through. In fact, it's about as interesting to watch as paint drying. There's really no drama to it. It's all very quiet, very easy, and the changes very quickly occur. In fact, pendiculation is of the same spirit as yawning. In fact, yawning is a form of pendiculation. So now, 
I'm going to address a couple of points related to the description of this workshop having to do with the elimination of the effects of traumatic injury and improvement of functioning. So I have to define my terms now. When I say traumatic injury, I don't mean brain injury, traumatic brain injury. That's brain damage. That isn't sensory motor learning or conditioning. This works with the vast majority of injuries that can heal. And the definition of trauma that I'm using is any self-protective reaction that continues automatically after tissue has healed. The words, he was never the same after that, apply. So if you, when you see people who walk with a limp or a shoulder down and back, who are getting so-called stiffer as they get older, what's really happening, they're not getting stiffer, they're getting tighter. And this getting tighter is the accumulated effects of injuries and stress that occur over a lifetime has nothing to do with aging. It has to do with accumulation of habit, tension habit formation. And that lends itself very nicely to the pandicular response. So we're talking about the after effects of injury as a self-protective cringe response in which a person is tightening up and pulling the injured area out of danger of further injury. You stub your toe, what do you do? Right? You protect yourself. And it's a tightening up. And very often that tightening up may last decades. Here's an odd story. I once had a client who was supposed to have given me her entire history of injury. We're starting the session, and in the middle of the session, she goes, oh, I just remembered, I was in a plane crash. <laughs> okay? A certain kind of amnesia is occurring here. And in fact, Thomas Hanna, who developed the approach that I'm advancing here, coined the term sensory motor amnesia. What makes it amnesia is that the person loses the sense of free movement they have. The injury has created such an intense experience that it overpowers and replaces the natural movement control and natural sensation. That's the amnesia. And it also shows up as people forgetting they were in a plane crash. However, as we work through the session and the sensations of that area surface for that person, the pendant memory surfaced with it. And that's how she remembered the plane crash. Pandiculation may be described as whatever the person is doing wrong, have them do it more and then less. What that does is it takes an automatic reaction pattern and by deliberately doing it, the person recovers control of it. It shifts from automatic back to voluntary control. And when that happens, when the person is no longer doing it, the contraction habit no longer occurs. They recover their natural state. A couple more things here. Oh yes. One thing is that I promise to say after the session to answer questions. We have a lot to cover here. So I ask if you have questions, save them. Meet me outside. Next thing. I have a rather nasty go around myself. I had symptoms that included lightning-like sensations going through my abdomen. Numbness and burning through my right thigh, front and side, not back. I had sciatica-like symptoms that went down my right leg. Groin pain, bladder pain. A feeling like a tight wire going down my spine that prevented me either from bending forward to put on socks or from straightening up completely. Pain in my ribs here and a feeling like my head was being jammed down onto my topmost cervical vertebra. I didn't know what was going on for some time. Finally, I got the idea and checked myself for twisted sacrum, and I found the left side jammed deeper. I still didn't have a protocol for dealing with it. So I developed it. It took about 10 years, and it became the program that I've now published called Comforting Your SI Joints, which has been very effective. In a survey, I took with people who used an earlier than the polished version 94% either got some improvement or continuing to get improvement or completely dissolved, extinguished all the symptoms. 6% didn't, but they didn't get worse. That's pretty good, 94%. So I, that's online. It's published. 
and I bought 21 DVDs, sample DVDs, for the asking. And again, afterwards. Oh, I didn't mention, I've been published a few places. The Townsend Letter for Doctors, the American Journal of Pain Management, and the Therapeutic Specialist. Can you, can you make a full screen? I wish I could, but, uh, well, let's see if this will work. Oh, no, that's the best I can do. Bottom right, in the, do it for you. Oh, good, thank you very much. <laughs> little mercies. All right. Do you mind if people take photos? You may. Yeah, that's fine with me. Any photos is fine. Now let's see if there's anything else. Oh yes, and I'm going to put panticulation into the context of how we charismatic educators use it in practice. So you'll see how it fits in. I will tell you that the panticulation deals with action patterns. We're not dealing with muscles in an anatomical sense where this muscle is tight, we're going to release it, that's only partial. And when a person is stuck in a pattern, they're stuck in an entire pattern. And if you just shift a little corner of it, the entire pattern is going to resurrect a little piece you changed. You've got to deal with entire action pattern. You're dealing with movement. The coin of the realm of the muscular system is movement, movement and sensation. But when you are functioning in life, it's all these movement that involve muscles in integrated patterns of coordination. So I'm going to put that in context. So you'll have a chance to see, hear, feel, do, see it in context, and then get more information. I'm going to show you where you can get more information about this on your own. There'll be an email address I've provided that gives you cornucopia of different resources, some video, some written, some audio. Plus, the part that I can't cover in this talk, which is the cognitive side. Now, when I say cognitive, I'm talking in a way, this is, the, I use the term because that's how this conference is framed. Cognition is mental. We're talking about sensory, movement and sensation. But cognitive is kind of the, the incoming sensation interpreted mentally. And there is a way of dissolving stuck habit patterns at the cognitive level. That means a person is trapped by memories, another form of trauma, emotional trauma, right? And there's a procedure, an entry-level procedure that I've developed called the gold key release. It does exactly what the word implies. You work this thing through, if you're working on a particular trauma pattern, what happens is it progressively loses its charge until you have trouble remembering what it was. At that point, it takes effort to bring it back up again. And what happens in its place is best characterized by the term spontaneous right action. The person's spontaneous actions are vastly more satisfactory and appropriate when they're no longer in the grip of a traumatic memory. They don't have to remember, they don't have to affirm, it's done. Now again, I can't present that here. We only have so much time. And I'm making that information available with the rest of the cornucopia of resources that I'm making available to you all. Pandiculation is an action pattern found universally among animals with a spinal column, generally done upon arising from rest and any time at random as a spontaneous action of self-refreshment. Pandiculation consists of a strong, voluntary contraction followed by a slow, leisurely release and movement. The strong contraction part of pandiculation sends a cascade of sensory nervous impulses to the sensory areas of the brain. This cascade of sensory impulses reforges the connection or integration between the sensory and motor or muscular control areas of the brain, immediately resulting in better voluntary control of movement and restoration of voluntary control when lower levels of the brain associated with primitive reflexes of stress such as are triggered 
by the pain of injury, have taken over muscular control. The saying that describes this reforging of connection between the sensory and motor or muscular control areas of the brain, you may have heard it before, is neurons that fire together, wire together. Animals, including humans, commonly pandiculate upon arising from rest in instinctual patterns associated with yawning. However, a pandiculation done deliberately may be done in any habitual muscular tension pattern to get the same kind of result, which is an increase of sensory awareness of movement and position and refreshment of control of movement. The action of pandiculation dissipates patterns of tension acquired either through repetitive movement as the aftermath of very intense efforts or through injury. Muscles return to their normal resting tonus, which is zero muscular tonus, completely soft when in their resting state, and completely responsive in movement. Whereas habitually tight muscles are always somewhat fatigued and therefore have some loss of strength and responsiveness, Pendiculation causes muscles to resume their natural resting state, and so they quickly become refreshed and strong again. Finally, muscles habitually in a state of tension as a result of habituation or conditioning are more prone to spasm than muscles that commonly return to their normal zero tonus resting state. The higher the resting muscle tonus, the more likely spasm is to occur. Pandiculation greatly reduces the likelihood of spasm occurring and relaxes muscle spasms where they have already occurred. What's it good for? Eliminating pain, improving accurate sensory awareness, sometimes called body image, restoration of energy lost through habitual patterns of muscular tension as internal drag and waste of physiological resources, rapid sensory motor learning of new things, that means when the person is free of the old contraction pattern, there's room for them to take something new in. When a person is in pain, how available are they to learning anything new? So, we wipe out the pain, we dissolve the habituation or stuckness in the old pattern. It supports all movement disciplines, all therapeutic efforts. And in my practice of 27 years, uh, maybe with one or two exceptions, it's been entirely satisfactory as a standalone approach to eliminating chronic pain. Uh, I have uh, the experience of not needing many sessions to work with a person to clear up a condition. In fact, almost never have had to repeat a session with a person. It was one case where I did, and it turned out she had a nutritional deficiency and I suggest that she take a calcium, magnesium, phosphorus supplement, and two weeks later she was no longer returning to the, to the old pattern of contraction. So it didn't have to do with sensory motor amnesia. In this rare case, it was a nutritional deficiency. I don't mess with nutrition much with people, but in this case, a little bell went off. That's what happened and what she needed. Let's look at some before and after. Most of these people, one session. My whole life, I've been stuck. Like, like I said, I was doing sports. Yeah. I was never able to stretch or do anything. All I can tell you is that I've had a lot of construction injury, and this is the answer. I go, I've been through everything.
everything. And I go, and this isn't, oh, you're going to feel good for a while. I go, it's about curing you. I mean, they had put pillows underneath my lower back and had bent me backwards. Hmm. And I think, and after that, that had uh, exponentiated my problems severely. And it, that is the core of my problem. And I know that if this core isn't taken care of, all that other stuff's going to start regressing. Rarely do you meet people that they actually change your life. And you've changed my life, for sure. And I just, for the first time ever, I feel positive about where I'm going. Because I've always been looking for this, but I didn't know what it was. Mm -hmm. I had no idea what it was. I slept really well last night. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, got, I, I went to bed at 9 and got up at nine. <laughs> uh -huh. I haven't had a good sleep like that because I'd always wake up fatigued because uh -huh. we were talking about the muscles were always like that. I'm like, God, I'd wake up and I'd still be exhausted. So, I mean, for years, so I'm sure you hear this all the time, stuff like this. So Stuff like that. Yeah. That's just, uh, it's just real nice. Already, I could feel my old tendencies would start to go that way, and my body is instantly correcting itself, instantly. Yeah. And it's just wonderful. Yeah. You don't, you know, you don't know until you find out. <laughs> you know that that you're really. True words were never spoken. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> much better I'm, I'm, I mean I believe it it's just so incredible uh, you really <clears throat> gave me my life back so you know it's just been great and right. I feel I mean I've gotten everything and more that I really hoped and wanted from this experience well you sure worked for it yeah almost well under your tutelage mm -hmm. it was just priceless yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's no way I could have done it on my own. When you're ready, you'll be turning on your side and fling your legs over the edge <laughs> and push up the sitting. It's much better. Huh. Wow. That's a lot better. This hip's a lot better. <laughs> wow. That can just move. Nice. All right. Try touching your toes without forcing. No, not forcing, I can just almost go flat-handed. It used to be so flexible. Well, used to be. What about right now? Right now, I'm flexible and it feels good. Okay. Just, and I can actually roll up and it doesn't hurt to do it. But normally just getting up off the table is just the hardest thing. I go to massage therapy, which feels really good, but getting off the table is so painful on my back. Mm -hmm. And it actually rolls, which and it actually rolls in a long time. Very nice, good, good work. Yeah, that was very good. <coughs> that was very good. All right. Okay. <clears throat> Experience time. What I'd like to do is demonstrate first. Shoulders done sitting. Oh, here's another nice thing about this. You, you do the work, they do the work with clothes on. The only thing I ask is that people wear loosely fitting clothing that will not interfere with the movement. So now you get to you get to have a chance to have my hands on you. You can do shoulders. 
Anybody? Raise your hand. Okay. <laughs> Stand up. Let me look at you. I want to make sure. What I'm choosing is, is someone where we don't have a neck injury involved because it takes time and we don't have a lot of time to play with it. I'm looking for someone. Well, oh, back. What is it? So I think we need for the back, not the shoulders. So. I'm sorry. What is it? So I, I was just asking. So it's one between my shoulders and my back. Yeah, that's generally, it's, the, it's not shoulders, that's the, the spinal extensors yeah. or maybe even the fine rotatory muscle, the muscle that can control vertebrae, but we can play with that. I can, let's see here, I'm looking for someone whose shoulders are up and I can, I can see a cup. You want to play? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move, you can sit on the stool here, you can face the rest of the group here. This demonstration is to show you how to do what you're going to do, and I will walk you through the first time and have you do it by yourself the second time. Okay. So can you do it with her? Well, first, first see it. So here it is. First, let's just have you raise and lower your shoulders so you can feel what that feels like, and I can see what's going on in you. All right. So now you can see what her movement is like. I'm going to place my hands just to feel her movement. You come up again. And I'm feeling her range of motion and strength level. Come up again, that's fine. Now come up and hold. What I'm doing is resisting, keep coming up. Pull your neck in like a turtle between your shoulders. And do a chin up, chin down movement. Feel the tightest position. That's down, that's up. There, it is. shrug into that. Big breath in, very slowly, and I mean slowly, no. I'm matching her original effort level. So she was in control. Just keep melting. If you're melting, there's movement occurring. Keep letting go. Okay, I'm not forcing, no stretching. There we go. Let your head come in neutral position. There we go. Okay, let's do that again. All the way up. Yeah, there's something on the right side of your neck, right about here. Aim into that. And pull the shoulder toward this. There we go. Okay. And well, turn your head slowly right until you engage this place more. Keep going. There it is. All the way into it. Shoulders. Pull your neck in like a turtle. And then very slowly melt and come to neutral. Slow motion. Get the shoulders widen. There you go. There you go. There's something. There you go. Left side, let go a little faster. There you go. Okay. And your elbows bent to 90 degrees and push down for a moment. And rest. And let's go. And now play with your shoulders. And you may say what you're noticing. It feels like something's releasing in that area. It's like letting go. Yeah. How about ease of movement? Yeah. Even up. Okay. This is what I call the easy way. Thank you. Next! <laughs> All right, you can put your hand up first, so it's timing. You see, but it doesn't take a lot of time to sit facing the group. Because it's easy, but we're using an inherent neurological process related to yawning. How difficult is that? It's just no one what to do. You come up and down a few times, and we're again going to, well, you don't have that much to do. You have some stuff in your neck going on. I don't know that that's getting for us right now. All right, that's good. Now you come up all the way. Breathe in all the way. And tip your head forward or back to find the tightest location in your neck. Find the tightest position. It's more toward the middle. All right, and then stay there. Shrug into that neck in like a turtle. Perfect. And then very slowly melt. Slower. That's fine. Oh, that was good. Do it again. All the way in. Good yeah. try. We're doing twice. Hold. Breathe in big. Make you. That's it. Now slowly melt. Very slowly. Slower. 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 Okay. Elbows bent. Push down. Rest. Play with that now. Yeah, it feels different here. And this shoulder feels a lot more open. Okay. Than, you know, this Good. Thank you. The easy way. This is the easy way. Now, a word on why I said neck is problematic. When a person has a neck injury, the 
creator's response is this. Now, it looks like shoulders are tight enough. It's not about the shoulders. It's about protecting the neck. A, a person's loaded up in the neck. You can't do it through their shoulders. You've got to go in and do the neck with the person. Have you gotten enough of a seeing to feel ready to experience? Anybody not? All right. So you pick a partner, and you may do this sitting or standing, and I'm going to talk you through the first pandiculation, and then have you repeat by yourself, and then you'll switch and do the same thing. So don't all jump up at once. <laughs> Do it seated or you may do it standing. Stand or seated? That's fine. Right. Okay, so we're going to call you practitioner and client. The client is in front of the practitioner. Back is turned to your practitioner, just as I was doing it here. So get yourself geared up into position. So again, you place, just watch your person lift the lower shoulders. This is so you know what the range of motion. Your hands are off at the beginning. And just watch shoulders up and down to see what kind of quality of movement. Two or three. Once you've seen it, then you know what you're working with. Put your hands on their shoulders. And as they lift, monitor the effort of lifting and begin to resist at an equal level, not more. And hold the shoulders up. Big breath in. That helps the whole neck and shoulder area tighten. And then at that level of effort, practitioners, you stay at that effort level as your client melts down or eases off. And so you do that, and you allow movement to occur as your shoulder comes down. Follow, follow, follow until you can tell it's done or your client tells you I'm done. Just keep letting go and follow. You're going to feel little hitches and hesitations. That's when the reintegration is occurring. Okay. And now, by yourself, you uh, practitioners instruct your client what to do. The hands are on the shoulders. Hands are on the shoulders. And practitioners tell your person to lift the shoulders and breathe in. You can move your head to find the tightest point position, the least comfortable position. And then, practitioners, you stay right on it. Coach your client into pandiculating out. That the contraction phase is the start. Then you relax out. Let the shoulders come down. You don't stay in that contracted state. You let go. That's right. That's your discovery and recognition. Now you finish with elbows bent, pushing down for a moment. Just for a moment is sufficient. And then have your person move the field. And then switch. Equal to your effort. And the effort should always be at a 
comfortable level. Never cause yourself to create it. From pain or fear. At the same level at the beginning. And that's right. You do two and then you push it down the elbow. We call this a locking or a quick reverse. Yes. Trained in this work. 
and learn how to recognize what the pattern with which they're working is. Let's see how we're doing on time. All right, I'm going to show you the page that has the email address from which you can get the cornucopia of further information. So it says information and training, yes. There's a ton of information. I've published easily in excess of 100 videos on YouTube. So information streams at somatics.com. We have links to published articles, video, audio, access to education for your own sake or professional training, and access to emergent developments. We'll come back to that page momentarily. I just want to show you some things. The Somatics book, currently, as far as I know, available 14 languages. Got a couple of minutes. Uh, volunteer for me to guess. Come on. Push back and rest. All right, and knees together. 
together and up on the table. See how quick that went? Now, you, you, um, let's just see something. Don't help. Oh, looky, it fell. <laughs> Come up again. That's it. Now, let's consider that a little bit done. You may turn on your side and fling your legs over the edge. And then when you're ready, stand and walk, and you'll notice some changes that have occurred. <laughs> That's what happens. Yeah, you change that, but when the foot meets the ground, changes. Uh -huh. Huge. You want to work with movement patterns, not with muscles. Work with action patterns. Okay. This is the easy way. Thanks. Certainly. <laughs> All right, so we've got to wind up. I've got to pack up and get out of the way of our next workshop here. As I said, I'll be outside, available for conversation. If you want a copy of the sample DVD from Comforting Your SI Joints, you ask for that. Let's see if there's anything. Oh, yeah. Who wants a summary of what we've just done? Okay, so I'm going to pull out some summary sheets and you may pass these, take one down and pass it around. As you can see, this summarizes. And at the bottom, you'll see there's an invitation to. Uh, Exploring possibility session with me. So you may, when you take this home, you keep the summer sheet, you may fill out the bottom, scan it in, and send it by email. And I will take people who qualify according to their answers, and we can set up a call and just explore possibilities. And that's our show. <laughs> And the pace of the sorry, <laughs> the pace is the same. So we've got the the pace is the the tempo is four. So there's movement, stretch. If you can see my hand over here, return, relax. Every repetition we have the same sequence. Move. Stretch, return, relax. So it's the same, so you can do two music. And the emphasis is equal. So we can't say that the move is more important than the stretch. And we can't say that the stretch is more important than the relaxation. Because it's a holistic way of thinking. So start now, sorry. <laughs> One A, salsa walking. Move, stretch, return, relax. One D. So the same beginning, but now I'm adding pill. Move, stretch, return, relax. One C. Move, stretch, return, relax. Move, stretch, return, relax. Two A. Move, stretch, return, relax. Move, stretch, return, relax. Move, stretch, return, relax. Move, stretch, return, relax. Okay. Move, stretch. Move, stretch. Excuse me. No one is perfect. <laughs> so that was uh, 3A and 3B on one leg. Okay, this is a special exercise because of the stretch on both sides. But basically it's the, the it's move, stretch, return, and relax within the stretch, okay? And then move, stretch, return, relax. So that was 3A, 3B, 3C, 4A. Push up. Four B. Balance posture. Four C. Hovering. Five A. Table top. 
5B and this. 5C. Sorry. To the other side. And now 5C is arabesque to attitude. Of course, there is a balance element in many of these exercises. I'm nervous, such a crowd. Okay, so this, this would be 5C. So here we've got stretch, 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 and stretch, and stability, and lots of things. 6A, cow stretch. Move, stretch, return, relax. 6B, good morning. Relax. 60 circle. And this should be a straight line, sorry. 7A. Roll down. And thoracic extension. You might see longer extension, but it should be thoracic extension. 6B. Sorry, this is 7, right? 7B. Flexion, 7C, dancer, eight a squat, 8B, figure out, 8C, frog leap, 9A, Flex stretch. Ninety. <coughs> Sit in squat. Nine C. Ten A. Quad. Sorry. Ten A. Quad extreme. Ten B. Quad side. And the run. See the runner position here? Ten A, ten B, ten C, and then we finish with the wheel. And that's it.
very specifically. And the only time where they have to follow the rules exactly is when the teacher takes them out. And then you have to follow the teacher's directions and you have to come out. Um, the next session is the fun. Then, eventually, students learn to come to the and to move on. Uh, Thank you. 